Son of Boss was a criminal tax avoidance scheme for corporations in the 1990s. Uh, the Marriott Corporation was one of the companies that got nailed for avoiding taxes illegally using that scheme. Mitt Romney was on the board of the Marriott Corporation. He was the head of the audit committee on the board when Marriott engaged in that tax avoidance scheme for which they got caught and for which they had to pay tens of millions of dollars in fines. Son of Boss. The Cayman Islands is an island that's sort of catty corner from Cuba and Jamaica. It's an island where there are lots and lots and lots of post office boxes that attend to people who do not live in the Cayman Islands. That's because pretending your money lives in the Cayman Islands is a famous scheme for avoiding paying taxes on that money in, say, the United States. The one year of tax returns we do have for Mr. Romney shows holdings of his in the Cayman Islands. Switzerland is very far away from the Cayman Islands. It is sandwiched between France and Germany and Italy. It is famous for being neutral in wartime. It's famous for the Swiss Alps, uh, for fancy watches and pocket knives. And it's famous for its bank accounts. If you get a Swiss bank account, the Swiss will ask no questions. Their banking secrecy laws make Swiss bank accounts very convenient if you are seeking to hide money that would be somehow embarrassing. Say, money that represents the proceeds from some shady business or money that you are trying to shield from taxes. The one year of tax returns we do have for presidential candidate Mitt Romney shows him having a Swiss bank account. Here in the good old U.S. of A., we have something called an IRA, an individual retirement account system. IRAs were set up as a savings and investment vehicle for regular middle class Americans. In exchange for there being a limit on how much you can suck away into one of these accounts each year, the government shields the money in that account from taxes. One of the great mysteries of Mitt Romney's taxes is that even though there's basically a $6,000 a year limit on how much you can put into your IRA, the one year of his tax returns that we have seen shows that his IRA contains more than $100 million. How did that get there? No idea. But putting it there, in some ways, shields it from taxes. The New York Times did a quirky little front page story a couple of weeks ago about this house in Missouri City, Texas, on which Mitt Romney owns the mortgage. He does not live in the house. He doesn't apparently know the people who do. But the people who do live there send their mortgage payments every month personally to Mitt Romney. They refinanced with him as if he were a bank, but he's just a guy. Uh, they refinanced with him personally just a couple of months ago while he was running for president. The reason he owns that couple's mortgage on that house in Texas is that he bought it in the 1980s as part of a tax avoidance scheme. We know very little about Mitt Romney's massive and complicated financial history. Michael Moore said on the show the other day that we know less about Mitt Romney's finances than we do about the surface of Mars now. But we do know a little bit about Mitt Romney's finances. And what we know is all these exotic and picayune and aggressive and occasionally shady tactics that he has used to avoid paying taxes. Today, after telling ABC News a couple of weeks ago that he would go back and look at his taxes to see what tax rate he has been paying, today Mr. Romney said that he finally did go back and look. And it turns out, he says, he has never paid less than 13 percent in taxes. He will not elaborate on what he means by that. He will not prove it. He will not release any documentation to back up that claim. He just wants us to trust him, that if he were to show his taxes, that's what they would say. I did go back and look at my taxes, and over the past 10 years, I never paid less than 13%. I think the most recent year is 13.6 or something like that. So I've paid taxes every single year. In 2002, 10 years ago, when Mitt Romney was running for governor of Massachusetts, uh, his taxes were relevant then, not just on the question of whether he was actually paying any taxes. Uh, specifically in that race, there was a question about whether Mr. Romney would be allowed to, uh, allowed to even run for governor. It, w it was not clear that he had been living in the state for the seven years that was required by the Massachusetts Constitution in order to run for governor. His defense at the time was that he had been filing his taxes as a Massachusetts resident and that that showed he was legally qualified to run for governor. But then, just like now, he would not prove it. He would not release his tax returns to show this thing that he was claiming about them. Instead, we were all just supposed to take his word for it. His spokesman then, who is still his spokesman now, Eric Fernstrom, told the Boston Globe in 2002, 10 years ago when he was running for governor, that the Romney campaign did not have to prove anything. We should just trust them. Eric Fernstrom insisted to the Globe that, quote, the GOP candidate, Mr. Romney, had filed his returns as a Massachusetts resident. But he told the Globe reporter, you're going to have to take my word for it. 
anyone who took Mitt Romney and Eric Fernstrom's word for it back in 2002 got played for a sucker because those tax returns did not say what they said they did. Mr. Romney had not filed as a Massachusetts resident. Despite all the, trust me, trust me, take my word for it, you don't have to see him, trust me. The Democrats point to Romney's house in Utah, which was listed as his primary residence, to support a challenge. They also want to see his tax returns. We've now learned uh, from his own uh, lips this afternoon that Mr. Romney lied yesterday when he said he had filed resident tax returns in both Massachusetts and Utah. Romney acknowledged today he amended his 1999 and 2000 Massachusetts state tax returns to make him a resident here. He went back and did it retroactively. Everything we know today about Mr. Romney's tax history is about his Herculean and mostly successful efforts to avoid paying taxes. He just named somebody as his running mate whose budget would have resulted in Mr. Romney paying less than 1% in taxes in the one year of his tax returns that we have seen when he made tens of millions of dollars. Nevertheless, Mr. Romney today insisted that we should trust him when he tells us he's never avoided taxes altogether. He's never paid less than 13%. He won't prove it, but he wants us to take his word for it. The last time he and Eric Fernstrom were up against a wall like this and he said to trust him, it turned out he was not telling the truth. Do you think he's telling the truth now? Do you trust him? Do you trust him enough to be comfortable with him as president of the United States? That does it for us tonight. We will see you again tomorrow night. Now it's time for The Last Word with Lawrence O'Donnell.